dear colleagues, uh, head of agencies, uh, dear colleagues, UN staff, or dear partners, distinguished invited, or protocol observers. Good morning, bonjour, and then manaderechu. Uh, it is uh, for me a great pleasure to make these uh, few remarks as uh, the UNAIDS uh, country director and representative for UNAIDS in Ethiopia. This is my first time commemoration event of the World Day with the UN colleagues here. We are celebrating the UN and with the UN personnel beyond and we are, this is a very important and necessary habit to celebrate this event. I know that because of uh, COVID, this have not happened uh, since uh, some days, but some years, but now it's part of our work and uh, it's a duty for care of care. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the World AIDS Day is a day when communities come together to remember those we lost and uh, to renew collectively their commitment to end AIDS as a global health threat. This year, echo this call, equalize, unite to end inequalities, holding back ends of aid. Allow me to start by appreciating this great initiative that came from UN clinic leadership, supported by in, and in collaboration with the WHO, UNFPA, and UNAIDS. This is for me a sign of commitment and a very important moment of duty of care for all UN colleagues. This event comes after two years of COVID, as I was saying, during which it has been quasi impossible to organize this kind of event. Ahead of the World AIDS Day, uh, just some weeks ago, UNAIDS launched a report that was called Dangerous Inequalities. And this report was showing an equal access to right, to services, to science, and uh, also to resources, and this is the what is holding back the end of AIDS. It is showing that we are uh, have to do an urgent action to tackle these inequalities, and if we don't do that, we will not be ending AIDS. Allow me to give you a few information on that report regarding the inequalities that is uh, unpacked in the report and that is i'm encouraging you uh, to read all of you maybe we will send this to all of the staff so that you can be aware of what we are talking about the gender inequalities and inequalities faced by key population inequalities between children and adults are very essential uh, in these moments and we need to tackle them before, uh, before we, we, we lose the battle that we, are, we have already, we were already uh, doing together. I encourage everyone again to read that report. Gender inequalities and harmful gender norms are key drivers of the AIDS epidemic. Unequal power dynamics between men and women and harmful gender norms increase the vulnerability of women and girls in their diversity, deprive them from or to have a, a voice and the ability to make a decision regarding their lives, reduce their ability to, assess, uh, to access to services, including for HIV, and that met needs increasing uh, the risk of violence and due to other harms. Some reports are showing us that every two minutes, an adolescent girl and young woman acquire HIV, acquired HIV in 2021. In Ethiopia, one third, 
about 34% new infection are among adolescent and young women uh, from 15 to 29 years. And the recent ready, uh, study shows up that women ex are ex that are experiencing intimate partners violence in the past years were over three times more likely to have recently acquired HIV. A lack of policy, reforms, and investment within and beyond the health sectors is making it difficult, uh, even impossible, for adolescent and young women to access essential services. Harmful masculinities are discouraging men from seeking care. While 80% of women are accessing treatment in 2021, only 70% of men were on treatment. We think that transforming harmful gender and masculinity norms among men and boys could help reduce these um, uh, risks and will also reduce the risk and the vulnerabilities to HIV among women and the adolescent girls because they are linked. The gap between adults and children. Treatment coverage has grown since 2010. The world is failing now to protect kids uh, who are exposed to HIV. Progress in reducing the number of new infections among children has stagnated in the last five years. Why over three quarters of adults living with HIV are on antiretroviral therapy. Only about half of kids are accessing these life-saving medicines. In 2021, children were accounting for 4% 4 of people living with HIV, but 15% of all the AIDS-related deaths are among those people, those kids. In 2021, only 52 children were accessing treatment. In Ethiopia, while more than 80% of adults living with HIV are accessing on IRT, only less uh, than 40% of children are accessing IRV treatment. Funding, uh, funding is also another e inequality that we have to address. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, HIV remains to be a major public health. It is not over. I know that some of us think that we don't see people around us who, are, who can be seen as HIV positive people or who have AIDS like in the past, but it's not over. We need to continue to fight uh, if we want to eliminate by 2023, 2030. Globally, if I may give some data, Globally, we have uh, more than 38 million w people living with HIV. One of uh, 1.5 million were new infect newly infected in 2021, and uh, more than 60, 30,000 people died from AIDS-related AIDS. In Ethiopia, uh, within the same years, 2021, above 60. 60,000 were li living with HIV, of which more than 50% are men and uh, are women, and uh, also ch kids were accounting for more than 45,000. 42,000 children was living with HIV. Similarly, we have the same figures on the newly infected and also on those who died from HIV. More investment, country ownership, leadership is key in the multi-sectoral 
HIV response. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, for this World AIDS Day that we are celebrating here in the UN compound, we are called to increase the number of people who know their HIV status. This is important because knowing your status is the base and of accessing to other services, to limit new infections and the new death to AIDS related, uh, due to AIDS related diseases. We are therefore all encouraged to have HIV tests for those who still doesn't know their status and it is free and anonymous. You will have it uh, nearby there. In conclusion, then, let me emphasize that success that we have achieved so far globally and in Ethiopia gives us hope uh, for the future. But we look ahead, we must remember not to be complacent. AIDS is not over, but it can be. Fundamentally political and financial and implementation challenge remains, but we should work together each of us has its role in this response. Let's start on us, on our families, on our programs, development in the humanitarian programs. Most importantly, on this UNAIDS, um, World AIDS Day, let's call all of us to equalize. The Equalize slogan is not, an, uh, is not just a slogan, but it's a call for action. A call to adopt the proven practical action that will help us more to have more ability, availability, quality, and the sustainability of services for HIV treatment, testing, and prevention. This time, this is the time to move forward together to ensure that all children start their lives free of HIV, that young people grow, stay free from HIV, and treatment become more accessible to all. Addressing inequalities will not help marginalized people only, but it will also help everyone in, the pan uh, in this pandemic. UNAIDS and all partners that are here uh, from the United Nations will, will have to work with the Ethiopia um, government and uh, civil society to stand ready to continue work with people and the government of Ethiopia to effectively address HIV in the country. I will end up by re, uh, making this remark, thanking uh, people from ASCAS that are with us, and also from AHP, A A A AHF uh, that have been working on us, uh, especially that are helping us uh, to do this uh, uh, free test. And to keep everyone safe, to protect everyone's health, we need to work together to equalize. Let's equalize. Thank you very much. Merci. Obrigado. Asante sana. Amasaga nalao. Thank you, Dr. Francoise. Uh, let me call on Dr. Abok to make the WHO remarks on the day. Dr. Francoise, uh, UN AIDS country director and representative. Dr. Susan Madong, the UNFPA country representative, the dear UN um, Healthcare Center staff, uh, the leadership of uh, Dr. Grace, uh, dear colleagues, invited guests, good morning to you all. Um, on behalf of the World Health Organization country representative, Dr. Burema Hamasambo, it's my pleasure welcome you this morning to the Community World AIDS Day commemoration event that will start today and stay in motion with us for three days through fun, informative, and educational activities. As you know, every year on December 1st, 
the global community marks World AIDS Day. We commemorate the day to support the people living with HIV. Remember those who have lost their lives to AIDS. Look back at our achievements and look ahead to a future that is free of AIDS. Progress has been made over the past decade in the fight against HIV, reducing new infections by almost 44% and reducing AIDS-related deaths by 55%. This progress was made because UNAIDS, WHO, UNFPA, and all the other partners have advocated for and supported the expansion of new HIV prevention and treatment technologies, provided guidance on combination HIV prevention, testing, and treatment, built capacities in countries to improve data availability, quality, and use to influence decision making, but also increased access to affordable medicines, diagnostics, and health technologies. However, four decades into the HIV response, inequalities persist for the most basic services like HIV prevention, testing, and treatment. And the, as you can imagine, this inequality is quite apparent in the African region, which continues to be most affected by HIV and AIDS. According to UNAIDS, in 2021, out of the global estimated 38.4 million people living with HIV, nearly 26 million, or 67%, were in the sub-Saharan Africa. This has further been compounded by public health and man-made events of the last couple of years. And we've seen this in the Northern Ethiopia response but also in some other parts of the country that has been affected by droughts and outbreaks and other health emergencies. Data from WHO on the global HIV response reveals that since the start of COVID-19 and other global or national crises, progress against HIV pandemic has wavered. Resources have decreased and millions of lives are at risk. At the United Nations General Assembly high-level meeting on AIDS in 2021, world leaders adopted the political declaration on HIV and AIDS, ending inequalities and getting on track to end AIDS by 2030. The heads of states and government committed to end all inequalities faced by people living with and affected by HIV in communities and, and countries. Inequalities are barriers to ending AIDS and need to be addressed. This year's theme for World AIDS Day is Equalize. Arguing each of us to address the inequalities, driving the epidemic and holding back progress in ending AIDS. And therefore, this year's UN Community Commemorative Event has built awareness creating activities around this theme. As we commemorate World AIDS Day together, let us resolve to act together to end inequalities with a precise focus to reach those most affected, especially the children, adolescents, girls, and women, so that we can move forward without leaving anyone behind. Let us pause to look beyond the figures to the people, persons, humans that are affected and continue to be affected due to persisting inequalities in access to, to services. It's only when we do that and strive to equalize that we can get on track to end AIDS by 2030. I thank you very much and looking forward to an eventful event. Good. Thank you, Dr. Abok. I now invite Dr. Susan for the UNFPA address. Uh, dear heads of agencies, dear partners, dear colleagues from the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, all protocol observed, uh, good afternoon once again. 
I'm very happy to join all of us, I want to say, this afternoon for this important event, which is among the joint activities that the United Nations undertakes each year across the globe. The theme chosen for the commemoration of the World AIDS Day this year, Equalize, is indeed no less than a call to action. And we have heard it from my two previous colleagues. As we gather here today as the United Nations family, we have to be mindful that we cannot end AIDS without ending the equalities those inequalities that are persisting, the violence which is persisting, the, depriv the deprivations that are also driving this epidemic. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, the COVID-19 pandemic in the last two years has, one, reversed many of the development gains we have been supporting. And two, deepen inequalities. And three, undermine the global efforts to end AIDS by 2030. But we cannot afford to despair. Rather, we need to come together, just as we are doing today, but more strongly more passionately to face the challenges. At UNFPA, we advocate for an integrated response to HIV through the provision of essential services and supplies, while working within the broader social context to end all forms of discrimination and accelerate the re realization of rights for everyone. In the Eastern Southern Africa region, and Ethiopia is part of this region for UNFPA, we have one standalone transformative resource on zero sexually transmitted HIV infection. Each country office of UNFPA in this region has to plan its programs has to implement those programs, has to monitor, has to evaluate on these important transformative results. It says the importance that the organization attaches to this um, development challenge, to this plight, to this curse to humanity. UNFPA calls for better use of the tools at our disposal to move forward in the HIV response agenda, including new forms of prevention and treatment. And on those tools, allow me to quote our executive director, Dr. Natalia Kanem, and I quote, now is the time to use them, make them universally affordable and accessible in doing so, we will stop the further spread of HIV." End of quote. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is therefore my honor to launch the HIV self-testing campaign among the United Nations staff here in Ethiopia as part of the commemoration of the World's AIDS Day by the United Nations family. I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate UNFPA's commitment to continue supporting this important initiative alongside my previous uh, colleagues. And I have named UNAIDS, WHO, and of course, other, other partners. Finally, I would like to thank, and the list is a bit long, <laughs> the United Nations Health Clinic, UNAIDS, WHO, AFSAD, AHF, 
and other partners involved in the organization of this event, which we know already that is successful and will even be more successful as we will be here for the next three days in terms of testing. I thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>